For this video, what I want to do is show you how to use Bayes' rule to find the probability of having a disease given that the test was positive. So I already have Bayes' rule written out. Bayes' rule says that the probability of A given that B has already occurred is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given that A already occurred divided by the probability of A times the probability of B given A plus the probability of not A times the probability of B given not A. So the A with the bar over it can also be written as tilde A or A prime, depending upon your text. And this is just read as not A. The line that is drawn in between the B and the A and the B and the not A is read as given. Okay, so that just means that the other one has already occurred. So let's put this in context of the problem that we have here. So basically what we're saying is we're trying to find the probability of the disease. So I'm going to let disease be A, given that the person tested positive. So this will be our B. So if it helps, you can write it in the context of the problem. So we're looking for the probability of the disease, and I'm just going to abbreviate it because it gets too long to write, given that the test came back positive. So this means that you've taken a medical test, you've come back positive for the um, first test, and we're looking for what is the probability that you actually have the disease based on the rates that we have here. Okay, so again, wherever I have an A, I'm going to replace that with the disease. And wherever I have a B, I'm going to replace that with the positive. Okay, and we're going to use the information in the problem to help us fill in all of these values. Okay, and the not A just means that you don't have the disease or no disease. You can write it however makes the most sense to you, but there is no disease times the probability that you tested positive given that you don't have the disease. Okay, because sometimes you'll have a false positive, which means that the test showed that you have it when you really don't. Okay, so let's go through and talk about all of these different values based on what's in the problem. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look for this, the probability of actually having the disease. Okay, so the probability of the disease is what is listed out in the problem right here. So a certain disease occurs in approximately 0.7%, and we have to convert that percent to a decimal. Okay, so this would be 0.7%. And basically to convert it to a decimal, we would divide by 100 and we would get 0 0.007. Okay, so that's what we're going to plug in where we have the probability of the disease in both of these locations. Okay, the next thing that we want to look for is the probability that we tested positive positive given that we actually have the disease. Okay, so for this, what we're going to use in the problem is the false negative rate to help us find that. So the false negative means that you actually have the disease, um, but you tested negative for it. So this is really bad in the medical world. So you really do have whatever this disease is, but you tested negative. So again, we always want to convert our percents to a decimal. So 1% would be 0 0.01. Okay, so the probability of being positive, given that you actually have the disease, is equal to 1 minus the false negative rate. Okay, so it's basically the complement of the false negative rate. So I would do 1 minus 0 0.01 and I get 0.99. So 99% of the people that have the disease will actually test positive. So that's what this is telling us here. Okay, so this value right here is what we are going to, we're going to plug in 0.99 for both of these. All right, so moving on. 
The next thing that we want is the probability of no disease. Well, the probability of no disease is just the complement of the probability of the disease. So we would do 1 minus the probability of the disease. So 1 minus 0 0.007, which is 0.993. Okay, so where I have the probability of no disease, I'm going to plug in 0.993. And then the last thing that we need to find is the probability of testing positive given that we don't have the disease. So that means that we had a false positive. We really don't have the disease, but we tested positive. So this is the false positive rate of 5%, which again, we would convert to 0.05. Okay, so this is just our false positive, which is 0 0.05. So now all we have to do is plug in those values and we'll get our answer. So the probability that we have the disease, given that we tested positive, is equal to the probability that we have the disease, the 0 0.007 times the probability of testing positive given that we had the disease, which is 0.99. Okay, and then we would do the same thing, 0 0.007 times 0.99 plus the probability of no disease, so we can see that that's 0.993, times the probability that we um, tested positive given that we don't have the disease which is 0 0.05. And so now it's just a matter of simply plugging it into your calculator. So I'm gonna plug it in all at once, and I'm just gonna use a free graphing calculator, desmos.com. So if you go to Desmos and you hit the scientific calculator, it will pull up a scientific calculator for you. And then we can just plug in the values that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and hit divide first because then it goes, it puts it as a fraction so we can see it exactly how we have it. So we have 0 0.07. You could also get this by putting the whole numerator in parentheses times 0 0.99. And then we would go down to the denominator and we would plug in 0 0.007 times 0 0.99 plus 0.993 times 0 0.05. So all I did was I plugged in exactly what I had here. Um, this calculator allows me to put it as a fraction, so whatever I type in the numerator st stays in the numerator, whatever I type in the denominator stays in the denominator. So you always want to make sure that you plugged it in correctly. Um, if you had a different calculator that didn't set it up this way, just make sure that you put parentheses around the entire denominator. Okay. Um, so I could have achieved the same thing by putting both the numerator and denominator in a set of parentheses. So the answer to this is 0.12248. So I'm just going to round it to four places. So I'm going to say that this is approximately 0.1225. So we can say that approximately 12.25% of people who test positive for this disease actually have it. Okay, um, so this theorem does look scary, but it's a matter of just plugging the values into the right place. So if you know where to plug everything in, it's really not that bad. It's just a simple way of finding the answer. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.